the first three presidential terms, uh, Washington twice, John Adams the, uh, for, uh, for one term, uh, were dominated by Federalists. And this changes with the election of Thomas Jefferson in 1800. It's important to remember Jeff Jefferson was seen as the, uh, the advocate of the common man. Uh, at this point in history, nine out of 10 Americans, or 90% or so, were involved in, uh, were living in rural areas, uh, most of them heavily involved in agriculture. The nature of agriculture was changing at this point from sort of uh, rural subsistence farming uh, to one of more commercial agriculture. Uh, this is probably most evident in the South with the growth of the cotton industry. Um, European demand for cotton was skyrocketing at this time, and it's going to change the nature of farming. Uh, Jefferson and, and actually most people in, in uh, the founding generation saw the United States as growing westward. Uh, later we're going to refer to this as manifest destiny or this idea that uh, the continent was just laid open for uh, early Americans and that uh, they should take advantage of it. <clears throat> One important thing to note about uh, the election of 1800 is it's the first time uh, that the United States sees a peaceful transfer of power and it's a tradition that goes on even to today. Uh, the Federalists had handed off power from Washington to Adams. Uh, it would have been very easy for uh, the Federalists, who controlled the military in both branches of government, or I'm sorry, all three branches of government, uh, to simply deny Jefferson the ability to take office. Uh, but they didn't. They allowed the Democratic Republican to take office. And this is seen as uh, a very important movement. Sometimes it's even called the Peaceful Revolution or the Revolution of 1800. Now, once in office, Jefferson displayed uh, his... Uh, affection for the common man. Uh, he referred to it as Republican simplicity, Republican with a small r. Uh, the, the, the modern political parties really don't have ties to these founding generation parties. Uh, they might share a name, but they're really not the same. <clears throat> uh, he was trying to demonstrate down-to-earth simplicity and frugality. In fact, at, at times, he would even open the door of the White House himself in his robe and slippers. Uh, he was trying to, to display the difference between the uh, monarchical uh, kingly Federalists and his uh, vision of that uh, that uh, Republican simplicity, uh, the the reliance on the the uh, honesty and goodness of the common man. Uh, interestingly, Jefferson at his inauguration, while he doesn't live up to this, he does talk about how everyone in America was both Republican and Federalist, and he sets up the concept of loyal opposition that it's okay to disagree with the government. Uh, while he doesn't take the Alien and Sedition law laws off the books. Uh, they're not really enforced, um, but that concept of loyal opposition, again, something that's very important in the United States even up till today. The United States is becoming more democratic at this point. Remember all that land out in the West? Uh, people are moving into the West. Uh, land is so cheap and available that many people are starting to purchase land. Uh, democracy is becoming more available to people. In fact, some states out West are even starting to drop property requirements. Um, later, we're going to call this Jacksonian democracy or the, the era of the common man, but it starts here in the Jeffersonian era, era where more people are able to vote. Uh, this was feared by some of the founding generation who actually became sort of anti-democratic. Uh, there was a fear that the people who are these emotional, unintelligent, sometimes illiterate uh, people are starting to uh, overcome their betters. Um, there was this uh, concept of na a natural aristocracy that the wealthy would, uh, while they didn't have landed titles, they would be the ones that are educated, uh, had more experience, had the time uh, to think deeply about these issues. Uh, but now that the, the common people are getting more involved, even Jeffersonian Republicans were concerned of what some called a mobocracy. Speaking of contradictions, Jefferson himself is full of contradictions. He's the guy that wrote All Men Are Created Equal, and yet he owned slaves. In fact, he didn't just own slaves. He, he branded them. He beat them. He whipped them. Um, he talks about how slavery is a, a terrible crime, and yet he never sought to free his own slaves, partially because he was so reliant on them. Uh, he is a fierce defender of states' rights during the Federalist administration, and yet he's also the one that grows executive power by loosely interpreting the Constitution uh, in order to purchase Louisiana from the French. Uh, and then later, uh, as the war in Europe becomes more vicious, uh, he commits a nationwide embargo, refuses to let American merchants trade with Europe in 1807. Uh, again, vastly increasing the power of the presidency from what he had argued that it should be. Um, so, uh, by the way, Hamilton, who wanted loose interpretation of the Constitution, argued vehemently that Jefferson was being a, hip a hypocrite um, at the time of the Louisiana Purchase, that it was up to the states to, to, to negotiate that. 